Today I want to look at a really interesting series, and that is the sum or the series of reciprocals of twin primes. And so previously on the video we proved that the sum of the reciprocal of all primes diverges. But what if instead of looking at all primes we only look at twin primes? And so to write that up carefully it would go something like this. We're summing over all numbers p so that p is prime, or so that p and p plus 2 are prime. In other words, p is the start of a twin prime pair. And so to write this out, the first term, which is really like two terms, is 1 third plus 1 fifth. And then next up we have 1 fifth plus 1 seventh. Then next up we have 1 eleventh plus 1 thirteenth. And then you've got a lot of things in the middle. Out here you've got 1 over 521 plus 1 over 523. And then it goes, well, I would say forever and ever and ever. But the full twin prime conjecture has not been proven. So in fact, technically, even though we consider it most, most likely to be true, this is unknown if it's a finite sum or an infinite sum. Okay, now let's observe a couple of facts. So if this diverges, well, the only way for a sum to diverge is for it to have infinitely many terms. But if this has infinitely many terms, then the twin prime conjecture is true. But the twin prime conjecture is not proven. So that means that we must know for sure, or we must not know that it diverges. That leaves us two possibilities. So this series could converge or it could be undetermined so far whether it converges or diverges. Because if it's convergent then it could have finitely many or infinitely many terms. And if it's undetermined, well, you know, everything is up in the air. So which one is it? Is it undetermined whether or not this thing converges, or do we know if it converges? Well, in fact, we know that this does converge. And it converges to something called Brun's constant, and it's denoted by B sub 2, and its first couple of terms go like this. I should say this is approximately equal to 1.902, 1, And then, of course, this goes on and on and on, and the exact value of this is unknown precisely because we can't really be totally sure whether or not this has finitely many or infinitely many terms. Okay, so now that well, the cat's out of the bag and we know that this converges, how does the proof go? Well, in fact, as you might expect, the proof that this converges is pretty difficult. I think outside of the scope of a normal video on this channel. That being said, like some evidence for convergence, and I should say that this evidence is really forms the outline of the careful proof. It's just that there are a lot of technical details that go into this, you know, evidence or kind of idea of proof to make it careful. And I should point out that um, what we're using here comes from this website, lesswrong.com. Okay, so let's uh, build some notation. And so let's let pi of x be the prime counting function. So this is the number of primes that are less than or equal to x. And then by the prime number theorem, we know that this asymptotically grows like x over the log of x. And so prime number theorem, it's a famous result. And so then if we assume uniform distribution of primes, which, I mean, we're already breaking rules here. We're making some sort of assumption which we don't know to be true. Then we have the following probability. So I'll just say P of X equal to the probability that some number N from the set 1, 2, up to X is prime. Okay, 
So let's maybe do some examples of this function first. So let's maybe do the probability of 20 or P of 20. So this is the probability that some number in between one and 20 is prime. Okay, nice. But luckily we can just count this up. So this is gonna be the number of primes over the number of numbers in the whole set. But it's easy to count the number of numbers in the whole set, that's just 20. So all we have to do is list all of the primes between one and 20. And obviously we don't need the number one there as it's no, not prime. So let's see, we have two, we have three, we have five, we have seven, we have 11, we have 13, we have 17, and we have 19. So we can easily count this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is equal to eight over 20, which can obviously be simplified to two over five. So P of 20 is two over five. But what we really want is P of X kind of arbitrarily. So let's maybe note Again, sort of making some assumptions and assuming that everything works out nicely, that P of X will be the number of primes on the set one to X over the number of elements in the set one to X, but that's just simply equal to X. But then by the prime number theorem, oh, and this should have been an asymptotic relationship, not an equality. This is asymptotic to x over log x in the numerator and x in the denominator or one over log x. So the probability that n is prime is one over or goes like one over log n. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the probability that we encounter twin primes will be the product of the probability that n is prime and the probability that n plus two is prime. But observe that that's going to grow like one over log n times one over log n plus two. But n plus two for large values of n is fairly close to n, so we might as, just, might as well just write this as one over log n quantity squared. Okay, so this is a really important kind of assumption that we've made here. I mean, obviously we've got some sort of argument why we expect it to be true, but our whole argument for this convergence or our evidence for our convergence is built out of this orange underline. Okay, great, so let's see where this takes us. So what have we done so far? Well, if we set P sub two of N equal to the probability that N is the first term from a twin prime pair, then it seems like, so we didn't strictly prove this, but we had what's called a heuristic argument that P sub two of N should grow asymptotically similar to one over the log of N squared. Okay, so now from here, we will reverse this probability into like a twin prime counting function. So here we've got P sub two of X is equal to number of twin prime starts less than or equal to x. But observe that that's gonna be equal to p sub two of x times x, because it's the probability that we encounter one times, well, how many elements we have in that set. But then this is sort of, but then just using multiplication, this is gonna be x over log of x quantity squared. Okay, so that means we have the following. So we've got this sum over all numbers p, p plus two, where p is prime of one over p plus one over p plus two. 
is equal to, I'm gonna write this as the limit as t goes to infinity of this same sum. I won't write all of these details, but these rules still hold. But now we're just assuming that this p runs between zero and t. Then we've got one over p plus one over p plus two. So this is like writing a sum as the limit of partial sums. But now the, observe that that is less than or equal to, or actually strictly less than, the limit as t goes to infinity of, well, this same sum that we had in the step above, but we have a two over p here. So what I did is I just replaced one over p plus two with one over p, but one over p is larger than one over p plus two. So when we add them together, we pick up this inequality. But now let's observe that that is like asymptotically similar to the limit as t goes to infinity of the sum over all numbers in between two and t of the probability of one over n times the probability that n is the beginning of a twin prime like we had over here. But now let's observe that that grows asymptotic to the limit as t goes to infinity of this same sum of one over n times the log of n all squared. Okay, so let's maybe start from this step and see if we can take it home. Okay, so so far we've shown that our like series that we're interested in today grows asymptotically similar to twice the limit as t goes to infinity of the sum as n goes from two to t of one over n times log n squared. And you know, like I've said before, this is not a careful proof. This is just an argument for truth. But that being said, like lots of times, these heuristic arguments provide mathematicians with really, really important intuition for things that end up being true. And so they form like really the basis of conjecture building. Okay, so anyway, let's get to the ending step. Notice that this thing converges if and only if the following integral converges. And that's the integral from e to infinity of one over x times, I'll call this the natural log of x squared now. Okay, great. But now, can we determine if that converges? Well, yes, we can pretty easily. So we'll do a u substitution first. So let's let u equal the natural log of x. Observe that that makes du equal to dx over x. Then when x is equal to e, that means that u is equal to one. And then as x approaches infinity, that has u also approaching infinity. So that's gonna change this whole thing into the integral, let's see, from one up to infinity of one over u squared du. But then you might know the p-series test for integrals like this, and you know that this converges, but we can in fact finish it off from scratch without like explicitly knowing that test. So let's rewrite this as the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from one to t of one over u squared du. We can take an antiderivative and that'll leave us with the limit as t goes to infinity of, let's see, it'll end up being one minus one over t. And so I skipped a little bit of a step there, but I think that's okay. But observe that as t goes to infinity, one over t goes to zero, so this whole thing goes to the number one. So that means our integral converges, and by this loose argument, that means our original sum converges. Okay, so well, what have we done? Well, we've just shown some evidence that this sum of reciprocal of twin primes converges. Well, in fact, you might look at this constant that it supposedly converges to and see this subscript of two. Well, in fact, there's a whole family of these constants, b sub four, b sub six, so on and so forth, which 
represent different groupings of primes. So b sub 4 would be the sum of the reciprocals of, well, all cousin primes. I'll let you guys look up the other types of these constants if you're interested. And that's a good place to stop.